Hello, my name's Andy and welcome to the garage. Here we have the next resto then, Mercedes-Benz 190E, 2.3 litre, 16 valve. I think that does make it the um, Ford Cosworth version. So a bit of a sleeper car this one. Looking forward to doing this. I think it may have been restored before. I'm not quite sure. Some of the wheels look um, very shiny, though the um, front grille doesn't. A bit of damage to the front grille there as well. Doors open on this one. Red inside. Opportunity for a bit of detailing if you can see that going round on the dashboard. I'm pretty certain it won't be staying all red. Pretty sure of that. Anyway, let's move on. Here we are, back with the Mercedes, the 190E. Mercedes 190, 2.3, 16 valve, Cosworth, street sleeper in its day. It's all intact, which I like. This may have been part of a previous resto as well. I've got some plans for this car. I think I'm off to um, do it as a privateer rally car. I've seen a few pictures when I was doing the research back in the day and um, about 20 or 30 years ago I was a rally co-driver and I, I noticed quite a few cars entered were um, almost unmodified except for safety reasons, roll cage, um, fire extinguisher, engine cutoff switch, and they could then enter. And I've seen a few pictures of these, primarily in Europe, being rallied. Quite simple decals, whereas the uh, Pukka factory versions are um, quite difficult to do in the decals, etc. So that's what I'm off to do with this one. Door mirrors are there. Everything's there. Bit of mark on the grill maybe. So Matchbox Super Kings, 1985 Mercedes Benz, made in Macau. Um, so the first thing is, three rivets holding it together. Got to try and get those out. So what I'm going to do is just, because I've already got a hole there, just off to drill down. I hope I can make a mark into the post. What I'm hoping here is to just get a, a drill hole ready for when I get the top of the rivet off so I don't have to punch it out. Right, so quick change of drill. Trying this with a five now. through. Well, she might come apart at that, I don't know. Using everybody's favourite tool. Maybe a bit more on this side, not sure. Yeah, a bit more. That might have done it. Nope. Sure that has yes and the front right so simple wheels are on a just on the clipper whoops there we go they're off whoops no control over them plastic base there's a number k115 Might spray that, might not. Let's have a look at the um, interior. Clean and tidy. I don't know if you can see that there. 
term. Just get a pointer. All the dials, free dials present on the dashboard. F free. Sorry if you didn't see it. Free dials there. Free dials there. The Mercedes badge. Three more dials. Gears stick there. So, chance for a bit of detailing inside, which, seeing as it's a simple model, will make up for that fact. Be able to have a laugh at me at doing that. There's a vent there, or a, it could be just a flaw in the um, plastic. Um, it's not going to stay that colour. Um, let's look at the chassis itself. Um, there's a bit of something going on there. The headlights are on this clip here. I'm not sure what's on this. I'm not sure what comes out first. Ah, the engine. What I didn't notice, because I've not tried, was the bonnet actually lifts up. And there's the glass. Now that's, that's in. The, ray, the grill on the plastic clip, maybe? I'm not quite sure. Let's see if we can just pull it off. I think it's on that, if you can see this. Let's just, there you are, there you are. This is like working with a mirror now. That plastic clip is holding the grill in. So I have to drill that out and there's two locating pins either side. But I'm sure that will glue back in. And now we can clearly see the K115 written all over. What about the glass? The glass seems to be held in as well. K115 again in the glass. Holding by clips. So I'm just going to do the obvious and just drill them out. The light drill. At the end of the day, the locators as well as holders. That's one out. I can see this. She goes. Glass is in very good condition. There's the clips. Right, um, let's see how we get to this boot one. I think we're off to have to go in through the underneath. have it. Yeah, there's the um, there's a grill with the Mercedes badge. Not sure if the, um, the the bonnet lid itself is gonna come out. Just give it a... mm, yeah looking at the bonnet lid <coughs> it's <coughs> It's on two, two rivets there. On two. Now if I take that out, can I spray it with the bonnet lid intact? Well, you know, I think I could. Because it could be a faff putting it back. And the doors are held on with a bar here, you see. Now, I want to take the doors out. Let me just put it down and see if I can just lift that clip, lift that little bar up. Don't want to force it and snap it, that'd be a disaster. Of course, getting them out leaves you, if you're allowed to get out, ain't going to be easy to get back in. I'm off to cut the video there and um, have a look at doing that off camera. It looks quite fiddly and um, I could be wasting a lot of time there. 
Right, I've had a thought about this. This is very tricky to move. It's sealed in there. You can't pull it out of its holders, this bar that's holding the doors in. I suspect the doors would be easier to get back in if I could get them out without breaking the bar. Now, the bonnet, the hood for my American viewers, that's held in by this bracket by this bracket here which is riveted if I take that out the rivets come into this top bit here I'm gonna to have to glue it down um, and just thinking what are the benefits of this none is the conclusion apart from making it a bit more interesting in the video stakes and perhaps seeing me make a mess of it um, you can see there is some bonnet detailing. I'll obviously be able to spray in there. And I will be able to get a pen in or some paint if I wanted to do something in there. So that is going in as one into the core stick. I've just noticed I've got some rear lights as well that I've got to push out somehow. You can see those bits of plastic there. Got to somehow get behind these two posts and get those out as well. Looked so easy, didn't it? Looked so easy. They always do. Right, I'm just trying to get these um, rear lights out now. Apparently got the first one out. Just get the screwdriver behind the back of it and apply a bit of pressure against the post. Or push with your thumb. And then that might just give me enough to get a smaller screwdriver round at the back or maybe even pull it with a pair of pliers try and take the backs off with a cutting disc I think I'm gonna get a chisel out right let's just go with a chisel I don't know if you can see that I can barely see it myself but Try and take that stubborn plastic away out. There we have it. Oops. Now oh, there we have it. She's out into the parts pot before we lose it, especially in this garage. Oh, there we are. There you are. You can see sort of chills cut through there. That bend is. that off and we'll be able to glue those back in woo result and there's the back of the Merc all clean and tidy ready for the caustic as I said she's going in as she is as you can see we're back at decals printed my test sheet got most of it right first time there it is on the other screen. As you can see, I've got a Mercedes, a van and a taxi to do. So I'm trying to do them all on one sheet. Successful so far. Mercedes has been polished up. It's quite a good casting. Not a lot to do on it, really. I will be finishing it off with a finer paper. Glad I kept the doors and the bonnet on bit of detail on the number plate S Mercedes Ben 1900 it's a good number plate anyway let's get some primer on it and then um, we'll be able to see if it looks as it as good as it does at the moment I'm just looking what I might do with the um, Mercedes 190e 2.316 valve matchbox scope for quite a bit of detail in um, underneath Got your petrol tank, your exhaust, your axles, drivetrain, through to the bottom of the engine. One wheel's just lost its chrome, but all the others are good. So I think just the Molotow pen on those. 
bit of detailing for the engine. Just a bit of molotow on the um, grill. And what I'm thinking about really is I was going to make it into a rally car. So I'd need some sort of bar across there for the rally cage as the side protector. Put the roof on. I've noticed in pictures they have um, something showing up there. Not to try and make a whole roll cage, I don't think. Um, I'll have to try it out, check that it fits with the when it's in the chassis, but that's what I'm thinking at the moment. And um, black on the parcel shelf. Might keep the seats red, but um, black on the dashboard and the wheel. And I don't know if you can actually see it, but let's just try. There you go. There is scope for a bit of detailing. There are dials there. So that's what I'm thinking at the moment. And it looks like this will come off. So I'll be pulling that out. That'll make life easier. Whoop, there she goes. Actually, it's on a bit of sprue there or something, but I'm sure we'll get into that later. That will make the detailing a bit easier. And um, I might even hand paint that. I'm not sure yet. Not sure. But obviously, we've got the gear stick now available. Handbrake. Proper handbrake. Not one of those new electronic ones. So I think there is it's quite a bit of scope to do a bit in the cab. Because it's a reasonable sized model. So I'm looking forward to that. The rest of the Mercedes is in primer drying at the moment while I think about this. Just chroming the grill here and see how it takes. Just the bottom there. I don't know if we'll actually see that when it's back in place. Don't think we will. The Mercedes is um, out of paint. And there's a colour I've chosen. Don't know if you can quite see it in this light. Maybe that's the better view just there. And that is BMW Calypso. Metallic Calypso, which is off my old E34, 1993-94 BMW. So what I'm going to do is uh, just a bit of detailing. So first up is the side indicators. I don't know if you can see that very well. Right, if you can see that, not looking too bad at all. Now I want to do the number plates. Um, I've had a look online, German number plates are black on white, both front and rear of the car. So I'm just going to start doing that. What I normally do is I just do a little test before I start painting, see how the paint's running on this old model. I'm using a 5 0 brush. Okay, we're on to the rear number plate now. I decided to try and mask that one off. Thought it might help. 
It is a more pronounced number plate, so it should have been easier to do. A bit too much paint there. Well, the masking's definitely helping at the bottom, but not the top. It's a bit better. There we are. Don't know how much you saw that. We'll be editing it. So that's front and back done. Okay, I've just got a bit of um, metal polish auto sol on the wings from the glass. Just giving it a wipe. It is very good glass. This may be all I have to do. No visible marks on it. If there were any marks, that certainly got rid of them. I mean, there's a, there's a, there's a front screen. Very clear, as you can see, through its own number plate. Back screen, not too bad. Difficult to show the sides. But, um, yeah, the glass is good. Okay, I've, I've cleaned. I've cleaned the glass on the BMW with some um, cleaner and I'm just going to give it a dip. In the floor polish. And she looks a hundred times better. Okay, I wanted to do a bit of detailing on the engine. Mainly the engines do look like this, what I've seen online. Apart from um, perhaps the end here and um, these pre-pipes. There we are. You probably didn't see all that, probably had to edit it out, but um, they do look, it does just give it a bit more effect. There we are, that's that bit done. Put it over there with the rest. Just looking at the um, Mercedes wheels, and they're, they're quite shiny. I don't think they're really going to work on a rally car. So um, what I'm going to do is um, just give them a, a touch of paint and just make them um, a bit darker, a bit more workmanlike. If you can see this, it's a shame really because the were the tidiest part of the car. It's not always easy to show the detailing. I can see that there now. Certainly, these are going to need a second coat. Of course, wheels themselves will, will need painting black. If it had been a Ford, I'd have um, given it white compromotive wheels. But it's not a Ford. As I say, I will be going round again with the... Um... Oops, a bit too much paint for that goat. With this. They'll need two coats, plastic wheels, all in one. I sprayed the interior of the Mercedes in um, matte black. 
And what I've decided to do, there's uh, six dials there, there's a rev counter, a speedo, a temperature gauge behind the wheel, there's a badge on the wheel. I am going to do those in um, well, a toe pen, maybe with a delicate paintbrush to apply it. I did originally paint this, hand paint it, but I just wasn't happy with the finish. It was so bad that um, I did decide to um, spray it matte black in the end. I didn't like the shine off the red seats. It didn't seem right, so that's why I went this way. Just some detailing to do on the underside now. We've got the petrol tank, got the drivetrain, some suspension bits in the bottom of the engine. So uh, just gonna going to give those a bit of highlighting. Don't know if you can see that. I think you can. Yeah. There's the petrol tank done. I think I'll do the engine, the transmission, a slightly different colour. Let's have a look at the engine and the transmission. It's got to be a bit delicate around here. Slowly does it. Just going down the transmission tool now, try and keep that in view. Leave it dry, come back to it. May need a second coat. See, we've done the exhaust, we've done the drivetrain, and we've done the Petrol tank, the petrol tank will definitely need another coat. Right, just looking at adding a roll cage to can't make it in one because there are barriers in the inside. So what I've done is I've cut found some wire that looked about the right thickness to the eye. I've put some side bars in both sides. I'm looking at doing the main brace, whatever you want to call it. And what I've been doing is checking that I can still get the glass in, because the glass does sit nicely on these fixings. There you go, you can see that, sorry about that. So the glass does sit nicely because the um, frame's got to be above the head headrest to be any good at all to the occupants. Now I've been cutting this down some little notches. You, you won't be able to see that it doesn't go to the bottom. And I'm just wondering how neatly I could do a diagonal across the back window. Um, so that's my conundrum at the moment. I've put the back of the roll cage on and I've got an idea to do the crossbar but I really want to see where the glass sits in the inside. So I know we're not at assembly yet but I am going to fit the glass. I think I can get away without gluing it so I could take it out again if I wanted to. There's um, the three holes free locating holes that it was in. So I just need to um, try and get it into those. Okay, it's in. You didn't see that on camera. It was a bit fumbly. I had to take it away. 
Interesting, there's two numbers on the back, K115 and K166. So now I can test to see how my um, inside looks. And that has to go in at an angle for the dashboard to come to the front. So we can see a roll cage at the sides and from behind. But the reason I wanted to put the glass in now is to see how something like this might sit because it's going to be that sort of angle and it may be okay. The other thing is I can look inside and see what gap I've got. Don't know if you can see it there but I have got a gap. Anyway you can see it now just down the inside that is going to be big enough to accommodate another bit of roll cage. Okay, this is what I'm just gonna trial. I've cut off two pieces of wire. Don't know if you can see that. Yep, you can, at an angle. What I'm going to try and do is I can fix them to this back post here and like that. Should I have packed in and given in and not gone for this extra little bit? Only time will tell in the next few seconds. I'm sorry you couldn't see all of that. It went off camera while I was trying to do it. I've got some sort of join there. Just setting i'm off to leave that there i can always do something with this little bit of a gap and it may not even be visible i think the trick is to stick this back in first see that that's not too bad i don't think i'm going to improve on that i'm going to let that set as hard as it can. I am going to leave them white because you, you need to be able to see they're there. What I want to do is just put a bit of yellow on the steering wheel. Most rally drivers seem to have a, a loop to tell them when the wheel's straight. Breathing a sigh of relief now that that seems to have worked. I'm reasonably pleased with the roll bar. There you are, you can see it, it's joined. What I'm just gonna do now is um, just put a put one of these steering wheel marks on it. It normally goes at the top of the wheel. The wheel's turned on the model. There we are, that'll be the view. Well, it's assembly time, I'm pleased to say just go over what we've done. We've put a semblance of a roll cage in to the um, interior. We've done some dials. You can see that there. We've done, done a marker on the steering wheel. A bit on the gear stick and the handbrake. I thought about seat belts and I thought about a roll bar coming over there and across. I'm trying to create the effect of a roll bar, not a full roll bar, and um, I thought it would be a bit tight in the cabin. We've done the number plate. We've done the doors, door mirrors. See that? There we go. Number plate on the rear, obviously. The glass is already in, which you saw me do earlier. Now, I've done the wheels. I didn't... I didn't do them two coats because I quite like the effect that I ended up with after putting that matte paint on top of the Molotow pen. So I decided to keep them as they were. Got the engine cover. Bit of work on that. The engine itself, obviously the grill. 
the rear lights you can see there and the front lights so I have had a practice at this already that doesn't mean it's going to go smoothly so the first thing I want to put in is the engine and um, which way is that? That is that way because part of the engine so there's the engine going in there I had to retrace my steps to see how to do this this is a struggle and a half wondering if I've got that clip the right way around let's have a look on the pictures Okay, we had a bit of a moment on the camera there. I don't know if I've filmed putting the grill on. But it was just a bit of um, super glue and a firm press home. And now for the second time, in two minutes, I'm going to stick this interior in. Now, I don't know if you can see, there is... Um, there is like a lip there. So the lip of the interior here has to go over that. So let's turn her upside down. See all the detail in there that's in the inside. Not a full roll cage, just one for effect really for the model. I'm just checking yeah that's going in in the right place and then just firm well not firm push just to push and there we have a roll cage perhaps it should have been a bit higher then it'd been touching the roof I don't know it's purely for effect and we've got a side bar for the driver protection there so that's on we can move on to the base plate now I've already tested out my rivets because um, they are a bit inconsistent. I've had to file them down. I don't know if anybody else has to file rivets down. But um, I'm just going to put a dob of the old super on. I don't like tipping the bottle on, it's a new bottle. I'm fearful if it runs, it will go everywhere. So this is my usual trick. Right. Got everything in. Well, there's no parts left on the on the desk so I'm assuming that everything is in she's pressed home right just a drop more glue around the front there Let's see if I can do these with my fingers no I can't One in. Right, there you. Sorry about that. Might be better. Just getting it close with your fingers. Yep, yeah, that one's seated. One to go. Oh, it's always a good time this when you when you get one together. Add more glue. Oy, a bit too much there. Never mind. Oh, 
and just push it in. In she sinks. Just give those a firm push with the non-sticky end. Pleased with this Mercedes, even though she's upside down, there's a bit more to do. There's the door handles, which will be black. There is the rear badge, which is going to be really difficult because it's very faint, but I'm going to give it a go. And um, get back to you. While the um, Mercedes is drying, I've got some decals to go on. You may recognise some of them. They were on the um, Porsche 959 I did a while ago. They weren't intended for the Porsche at the time. It's just that um, it, it looked um, a bit washed out in just that light blue. So uh, I've got extra of these. But they were really printed for the um, Mercedes. Okay, there we have one Mercedes 190E. 2.3, 16 volt. Quite like the look of it. It's quite a heavy model actually. Right, we're ready for the final phase of decals. So uh, without further ado, let's try and get the first one out. The first one will be the RAC Rally one, Lombard. What we'll do is I'll straighten the bottom of the Lombard. Up with the door line there. Oops, dragged it. Damn, damn, damn. Okay, let's try it with that. It's just a bit of air under it there. Good. Let's get some um, micro set on it. Well, that's the first one on. She's not looking too bad. Okay, we've got both sides done now. I didn't film the second, just as well. It's a bit more fiddly than the first. Leave that there for a second and um, move to the next one. I've trialled some of these before when they were just paper, so we'll have to have a big mobile one on the front. There's the number one. So let's, uh, without further ado, Get that in the old water. Judging that by eye if it's in the centre. 
looks okay. Now for the number one. Is the number one. Easy does it. that wants to be exactly in line with the um, Mercedes bonnet badge. Whoa, she's moving a bit. Let's try and double check the line there. Looking straight over the top of it now. Looks okay. Number one done. I'm sure these um, Dunlop ones are meant for the side door there. Let's just see how they fit. Maybe the rear end. I can't remember what I wanted to do. I'm sure the Dunlop was meant for the... I'm struggling with my hands here. I've only got two. As you can see I've changed my mind where I'll need to put that, so let's just um, move it along. She'll move, there's plenty of water under there still. Set on that. There we are, one done lop. Not sure if I should have that straight or at an angle like that. Long line of the bonnet. I think we'll go for straight. with the next one. Separating in the water. Put the joint together now. 
Don't want to part. There we go. Way off she comes. Let's try and get these two lined up. So we're not looking too bad so far. Right, we're going for a mobile one. Wait. Dropped it. It's going up the back there somewhere. Be careful I don't touch any of this because they'll still move. Keep it on that um, body line. How's that look? Not too bad on the body line with the front just on the cowling, the upturned part of the mob guard rather. Should I push it back? I think that looks better pushed back. Okay. Just putting another one on now, BBS at the front there. I've been using the lines of the car. Try and get these consistently to either side. Looks okay. Now we've got one of the bigger ones, Mercedes badge, which is going on the roof. The others have all been on white background paper. This is on clear. Obviously, I don't want the white background with the Mercedes badge, I just want the black badge. Okay, I'm standing up for this one. Got to get that three pointed start. Put it in the middle of the bonnet, I think. Middle of the roof, rather. Star is lined up. It's looking good from here. Trying to judge it. I think it might need to come a bit over to the right. That's it. Still movable. It's looking a bit better for me. Could possibly use a little little guide here. The old faithful lollipop stick. That's touching. Let's 
touching. That's worked for me. I can see some um, right, lube well alone there. I think that's gone okay. you like her, Mercedes-Benz 190E 2.316 valve Cosworth in rally colours. Mercedes wanted to take the 190E rally in so they asked Cosworth to develop an engine of 320 brake horsepower for the rally car which they did. Unfortunately that was done just as Audi released the Quattro with its turbos, which totally outclassed this car. So Mercedes entered the car into the DTM, the German Touring Car Championships. To do that, they had to make so many road-going vehicles. Hence, we got this Cosworth, which came about in 1983. The max power normally on the road was 183 brake. <coughs> But some, mainly I think the road going versions were 134 brake. Not 60 was 8 seconds and a top speed of 143 miles per hour. These limited edition models had a limited slip diff, different suspension and steering. And I do think this red colour does suit the car. Right, I've lifted the bonnet, the hood for our American viewers and opened the doors. So you can just see that bit of detailing inside the car there, under the hood there, the chrome, the wheel, the clocks, the rally cage. It's come out quite nice in the end, I quite like it. I think I was right to change the colour of the seats. I like the wheels. Matter of fact, I like all of this car, it's, it's, it's my best one so far. The decals have um, come out quite well. The number plate's good. But I'll let you decide. Please like and subscribe if you like it. I've already lined up the next two models to do. Um, I enjoy doing them. We've got over 8,000 unique watchers. We've got 140 subscribers. So it's nice to see the pickup rates happening. Could do with a few more though. Anyway. I'll just leave you to enjoy this for two more spins. Thank you for watching. Catch you the next time.